Hello and welcome. Thank you for inviting me back for another episode of our wonderful show. Today we are comparing our polydariums that we have built over the last three to four years. I've noticed a steep decline in the permanently sealed ecosphere hobby on YouTube. So I want to bring it back. I want to show you guys what you can do. Um, I want to show you the fun and the challenge of building permanently sealed ecosystems. So these are polydariums, and that means they have a water portion and a land portion. Our oldest tank is on the right, and our newest tank is on the left. We're going to compare them against one another in terms of uh, are they successful? You know, did the animals and plants survive? And then we'll also look at is it functional? You know, is it fun to look in there? Is it is it visible? Can we see inside of the jar? And if not, then I consider it to be a, uh, a mistake when we set it up. You know, we did something wrong. You'll notice over the course of this video that we have improved our methods a great deal. So this is our oldest polydarium. It is a permanently sealed, self-sufficient ecosystem. And to me, a real ecosphere is never opened. You know, I see a lot of discussion online about this hobby. Uh, followed by people who, you know, open up the jars and they add different things and they trim the plants and stuff. And that's not me. You know, that voids the experiment. A true ecosphere is never opened. The challenge is in building something that will last a very long time. It will be successful. It'll keep your plants and pets alive. I see a lot of people who throw some stuff together. And yeah, it looks nice, but that's day one. I want to see day 1000. And that's this tank right here. So this is my earliest polydarium, and it's not perfect, you know. Um, I built this with a very simple goal in mind and a very simple idea. I used a smaller jar placed into the middle of the tank full of potting soil. I then planted that with some moss and some other plants inside. Then we added some rocks and things and filled it up with a bit of water. Now, the idea was very simple. But it appears to be pretty functional. You know, we have our moss inside. It is alive. We can see that. But we also have a lot of mold and uh, algae and spores trying to grow on the glass, which is blocking our vision. The moss itself is also blocking a lot of the vision on the top of the jar. So we're going to look down here in the aquatic portion where we can actually see some things. Uh, that piece of duct tape there is the label for this project. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, ink has completely disappeared after so many years, and uh, that's okay. I'm not too worried about it. But looking closely at the water column in this project, and we happen to see our water mites. That's right. These guys are arachnids. They are related to ticks and spiders, and I believe they feed in a very similar way. Um, from what I've observed, they seem to be feeding on plants. Uh, most likely by piercing the plant with their little mouth parts and drinking the fluids of the plant. Um, but they are not parasitic, and this proves it right here. There are thousands and thousands of different types of water mites, so your mileage may vary. But this particular species is part of our creature collection. And seeing them in this jar, they've been closed in here for years. They've been breeding. They've been reproducing and living out their entire life cycle in this project. So that shows me that they are not parasitic. They're not feeding on fish or other animals. They are feeding on plants. And that's good to know because, you know, they are uh, more easily uh, able to be incorporated into our other projects. Now, looking a little lower in the water column, we happen to have a very deep layer of mulm, M-U-L-M. And this builds up in an aquarium, uh, like fish poo and different things like that, you know, detritus building up. But in this tank, I see that it's actually very deep, and it appears to be composed of very tiny particles. So I'm willing to bet that this is mostly waste from the water mites and possibly some of our other pets. There's also going to be a few bodies down there, you know, as they live out their lives and they eventually do die. That's where they'll end up. And I can see, uh, looking at this project, that, oh man, I wish I would have had some detritus worms in here. They would have loved this. They, they would have eaten this stuff. And this mold layer wouldn't have built up so high. So that's one aspect that we can improve on our polynariums. We must include detritivores. We need worms. 
Now looking closely at the marble chunks that we included in this project, we see this strange structure here, which appears to be growing a bit of algae on it, and that is attracting our ostracods. This tank is actually very clean down in the water, and I believe that's up to our pets here. Ostracods will eat algae, they'll eat all kinds of stuff. So they seem to be doing quite well. And yes, I know they're blurry, I know I need a better macro lens. Uh, we're getting to that point, that's on my list of things to improve. Up here at the surface of the jar, it is kind of nice to look at, but the moss is everywhere. You know, it's growing in the middle of the container, so it's branching out and covering every piece of the glass. So this tank is successful, but it's not much fun to look inside. It's hard to see anything in there. So let's take a look at my next Polydarium, version 2, which was built on October 28th of 2022. You'll notice a stark difference. This tank looks a lot different than the oldest one. We have more plants in here of a different type. We have bladderwort, moss, the same moss, I should mention, and duckweed. And this has caused a bit of a different aspect to the tank. It is automatically more fun to look at the, the beautiful polydarium here. Our moss is growing on the back wall, which allows for easier viewing. But we have some bladderwort up front that is growing up on the glass, which is a big surprise. But uh, that was not expected. So I see some different things in here that did work and that we did improve upon the first build. You'll notice that we used very little marble in here and more lava rock. I use marble chunks because they will uh, buffer the pH. As it gets very acidic in the water, a bit of that marble will dissolve and, you know, change the pH back towards 7 or 6.8, something like that. So we used less marble in here. It also is very heavy, so this lava rock was a better option. And when I built the island for this one, I just piled up some lava rock in the back of the tank, and uh, it did work. It's very successful. We have a little bladder snail right there. We have some ostracods swimming around. But you'll notice our water column is very shallow. It's not very deep water in here. And that's because uh, I could not keep piling up stone to build an island without filling up the jar with rocks. And I didn't want to do that. That was part of the problem with the first build. So let's compare it to our most recent polydarium here on the left. You'll notice some very big differences here. The water in that tank is almost twice as deep. And we have a slightly different mixture of plants over there. We have moss down in the water and moss on the little island that is starting to grow. I built the island in the new tank there on the left using a piece of plexiglass that I curved and modified and then um, built my island in that so that we avoided the pile of stones that plagued our first builds. And that might not sound like much, but to me and my place in this hobby, that's a very big deal. We created a much better island for our polydariums. And now in the future, we'll see more tanks like the one on the left there. Now it may look very dark, and uh, that's because of the island in the back is blocking a lot of the light. And also there's a very, very thick duckweed layer in there, which is blocking a lot of vision and light as well. And that's fine. You know, that's something that we may need to change in future builds. Maybe we could try to go without duckweed. Please excuse my light source here coming into frame. It was not on purpose. But um, I see some other things, even in our most recent build, that we can change and do better. And that's the point of this video, to show you that my methods and my ideas are changing as we go. We are experimenting. You know, you might just see my channel and think, oh, wow, there's a whole bunch of weird little ecospheres and stuff. But we build them for a reason, to gain experience, to say, oh, wow, this idea did not work. This idea did work. And we use that in our next project. Now, one of the main goals I had with this one, which was built on January 7th of this year, um, I wanted to include more terrestrial life. I want springtails and different creatures up here in the open air uh, land portion. So if you look closely at that little white worm guy there, that's actually a uh, tiny millipede. There's a few of them in here, and I am very hopeful that they can feed and breed and live out their lives in this little project. We also have a ton of bladder snail eggs, and that's really cool. That's a good sign 
that's showing that the bladder snails have a healthy amount of food available, and they're breaking that down, turning it into snail eggs and snail waste, which is actually more fertile than worm castings. So our plants in here will immediately take up all these nutrients that the snails are making available to them. Now, you might be wondering, what are the snails eating? Well, they will eat anything, pretty much. They will not eat any live plants. And that makes blighter snails a very good option for an ecosphere. But they will eat any algae that tries to grow. They will also eat any dirt that came in with the moss. And they'll eat <laughs> the substrate that we built the island out of, which is black cow compost. Now, getting a little creative with our light source here, you will see that this water is not actually dark or black. Um, it's actually full of life. The duckweed makes a bit of an upside-down forest with its roots, and if you look very closely, you'll see a whole swarm of little specks in here that are moving around. Those are li uh, living, breathing, breeding life forms. Those are paramecium, and it's so cool to see them in here. They adapted to this project very well. I accidentally built a paramecium polydarium. <laughs> uh, but that's really cool. You know, you'll see these guys in uh, quite a few of my projects, and I consider a swarm of paramecium to be a sign of success. You'll see a few bladder snails in there as well. And I did not see the, the die-off that we sometimes see when we build a new ecosphere. So this shows me that we have plenty of oxygen filtration in here for the plants. They are filtering the atmosphere, allowing the animals to breathe, uh, while also, you know, taking up any loose nutrients they can get a hold of. There are tons of nutrients in this tank, and it is a very successful project. It, now, one thing I can improve upon is uh, the lighting. I need to make it a bit easier to see inside of these jars, and that's a thing I struggle with. <laughs> if we were to skip the duckweed and build this without any duckweed, we would have a much more visible uh, visible water column. But that duckweed acts as an extension to the land portion. And that's very important if we want to maintain a colony of springtails or something like that in a polydarium. I'm very thrilled about this, you guys. Uh, thank you to our patrons, Clay Wise, Swan C, Jay, Jeff Kiesner, and Ashley Danielle. You can donate any amount, even a dollar helps. And uh, you can just sign up for free and become a free member just to show a little extra love for the channel. Either way, I am very grateful. Um, forgive me, you guys. I had to re-upload this video as I screwed up the text quite a bit. But we have a much better video now to watch. And I hope that you are uh, as happy about it as I am. So please uh, check out other videos on my channel. If you like this stuff, I have build videos for every one of these tanks. And I'm excited to share them with you. So have a great day. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you again soon.